Uh, my friends, we are out here this afternoon to share with you the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord and King and that he reigns over the universe, that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom which shall have no end. And as my uh, brother just pointed out to me earlier, uh, the book of Psalms says that the Father spoke to the Son, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool of your feet. And my friends, Jesus Christ is the King. He, he sits at the right hand of, the, of God the Father in heaven. And His enemies are being made a footstool of His feet. And many of you are unfortunately God's enemies. My friends, many of you are like I once was, an enemy of God and deserving of God's punishment. Deserving of God's judgment in hell. And I want you to be born again. I want you to be reconciled to God as I myself have been, as, as my brothers here have been by God's grace. And it is all by grace. It's not by works of the law. We know many people out here today have, have shown that they are self-righteous. That is, they're trusting in their own works, trusting in their own religious activities to reconcile them to God, to appease their conscience, uh, to try to be righteous enough to enter into God's kingdom. But we know that by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in God's sight. God told us through the prophet Isaiah that He is God and there is no other. He is the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. There is but one God. There is only one God. He is the living and true God. And my friends, you would do well to bow the knee to His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to follow after Him. Jesus. Sir, you need to be saved by Jesus' grace. Jesus. In fact, He came in the world to save people like you and I. Jesus. People who are as evil, just as evil as we are. Friend, I'd encourage you to come back and talk with us. We're willing to speak with you. In fact, we, we, want, we want to be out here reasoning with you, reasoning with you concerning the truth. And we know Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. See, though we deserve hell, though we uh, have earned hellfire judgment because of our sin, God in His mercy has sent His Son, Jesus, into the world to die upon the cross. And upon the cross, Christ satisfied, He propitiated God's wrath so that God can administer freely forgiveness to, who, to whosoever calls upon the name of Jesus Christ. It is all by grace, my friends. Uh, for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. In fact, the Bible tells us, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 11. In verse... 28, he says, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And my friends, Jesus Christ, through the preached word, extends that invitation to you personally today. That if you were to come unto Christ, deny yourself and to take up your cross daily and come after the Son of God, He promises to forgive you. Many of you perhaps say that you love God, but the, how you know you love God, how you know you love the Lord Jesus Christ is if you keep His commandments. Jesus asked in the New Testament, why do you say you love me? Or why, why do you call me Lord, but do not do the things that I tell you to do? Many people name the name of Jesus, but they will be excluded from heaven. They will be told on the day of judgment by the Lord Jesus Himself that I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And we don't want that for you, friends. I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to be self-deluded. Like I once was. For seven years of my life, I thought I was a Christian, but I was self-deceived. I thought I knew Christ. I thought that I, because I'd prayed the prayer, I'd walked the, the aisle, I had uh, said every, told everyone I was a Christian, so that made me a Christian. But it wasn't until, by God's grace, I understood that Jesus changes lives truly. That He, he by His power, can he when, the rain if I don't go sir, He can save you from your sin, which is much more important than rain. In fact, He could shower blessings upon your soul. So, I think when, okay, let's... I'm going to put myself in a situation. I want you to hear this too. I'm a, I'm not a college student. I'm an educator. But I was a college student last year. And I was here. And I just felt like, really? Like, you.
you guys attacked us. Like, I just felt like really attacked. I wasn't here last year, so the question was it the exact people here. Not the exact people, but like, I felt like people were reaching sin and like, I just feel like really attacked. And I just feel like I am a child of God. We're all a child. <laughs> What do you think? You well, the Bible think doesn't say not everyone is not the children of God. It says those so who come. Jewish best friend, not a child of God. Uh, if she doesn't believe in Jesus, it doesn't matter what her ethnic background is. Is she a believer in Jesus? I mean, is she a believer in Jesus? Yeah. Is she born again? I don't know. The Bible says to as many as believe. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't Jesus. like her that much. So, but that's just me. <laughs> she says she was your best friend. She's one of my friends. But I really have to get to my friends, and I really love this conversation because I just like. I'm such a make a difference person, so like, absolutely. And the reason I'm asking you, was it on this corner or was it a little bit farther here. down? Here, it was here. Okay. Right where you buy the tickets. Okay. I just felt like really like well, upset because. Well, and right where you, and the, the reason I'm asking this is, was it, it was physically on this corner or was it a little bit farther Maybe down by the tickets? I don't know. Well, and see, here's why I'm asking because I was the team leader for the team last on this year. Corner on this corner. I was the team leader in charge of the people. I just want to say, leader. like, but the people, I can tell you, like, about 500 feet down, there were people there that would walk past me and say, You're a uh, pastor, you're a whore, you're a whore. Okay, okay. That, was you. that was not us. That was not us. That was not us. We don't say that. 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 I'll do you. Yeah. I come here next year. I believe that. My friends, no, it's not true. We really didn't. I was on the corner too last year, this corner, and there were people right there. That they're they're wackos. So yeah. We'll say that. Um, but my friends, uh, Romans eight one tells us this. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, what does it mean to be in Christ? That is, it means. Well, ma'am, you still need to be born again. Doesn't matter what sin you're living in. I go to church. I'm a lesbian. It doesn't matter, ma'am, that you go to church. You need to be born again by God's grace. Well, that doesn't matter, sir. You need to be born again by God's grace. You know, I have a propensity to lie. I have a propensity to lie. I was born with the propensity to lie. But that doesn't mean anything. I still have to be saved from that. If you were born, perhaps, in that particular sin, and, uh, you know, lesbianism or, or homosexuality, um, you may have been born that way. I was born with the propensity to be the way that I am, which is a, a liar, um, a blasphemer, but God, by His grace, saved me from my sin, and so you can be saved from the sin in which you were, in which you were born. And we know the psalmist says, in sin did my mother conceive me, even from conception, even from the moment in which... Um, we are conceived and a human life is there. We are in sin and we are totally depraved. That's why God by His grace sent Jesus Christ into the world to die upon the cross and to be raised again on the third day. And that because on account of Christ's merit, on account of Christ's perfect work through His life, through His death, through His burial, through His resurrection, through His ascension, we have forgiveness of sin available to us freely by grace. Now, going back to what I just said, what does it mean to be in Christ? That is, it means to be wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. To be seen by God, in God's sight, as in His Son, as, as righteous as Christ is. And how we get that righteousness of Christ given to us is if we come to Him believing that He is gracious enough to give that to us, for He is. My friends, the wrath of God is coming one day. Time is running out. And once time is gone, it cannot be regained. Once you've wasted your life, it cannot be brought back. But my friends, what holds up on the day of wrath is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So if you are wrapped in His righteousness, God will see you. He will accept you on the basis of Christ's performance. But if you choose to reject God's grace, to reject the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then all that awaits for you is a fearful expectation of the wrath of God, which will consume the adversaries. Romans 1 says, speaking of those who are lost, those who are evil, it says, verse 24, Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen.
For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do that which ought not be done. I don't know. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. My friends, sin earns judgment. It earns God's holy wrath against it. When you sin, you store up for yourself wrath. You store up for yourself wrath on the day of wrath when God will see to it that sin is finally punished once for all. And my friends, we don't want you to go to hell, but that's where you're headed if you do know not Christ. If you know not the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do not know Christ, then you are headed for destruction. You're headed for hell. Your sins, your pornography and your drunkenness and your sexual immorality, your pride, your love of the world, your love of, of, these, of these immoral celebrities on television. These immoral musicians, my friends, these things will earn you hell. Your rebelliousness against parental authority and all authority. You know, we live in a nation where there is such rebelliousness against authority. So if you're a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu... Like we saw that recently in recent years with the, like the Black Lives Matter movement and the rebelliousness against authority and against authority structure in America. There's no, there's no desire to submit to authority that has been ordained by God and set up by God. My friends, sin kills, but Jesus Christ saved. Friends, don't lose your soul for your sins. Dear friends, and I call you that because I care for you, not necessarily I know that I know you on a personal level. Sir, come talk to me about it. Don't run away. The wicked run away. Nobody's pursuing you. Nobody's chasing you. Come back. He got afraid, I guess. Now, friends. I love sucking dick! We're not a man. Ma'am, you need to be born again by God's grace. Jesus Christ said, For the one who comes to me, I will by no means pass out. He is a gracious Lord. Jesus. Even his name, Jesus, in Hebrew is Yeshua, which means Yahweh saves. A God from the foundation of the world was pleased to choose a people unto himself to save in his son. Jesus Christ, and then in due time to send Christ into the world to die for that people. Is that right? Jesus did. He died for the ungodly at the right time. He died for someone as ungodly as you are, ma'am. He died for someone who is as wicked as me. Paul speaks of Christ's grace in this way in Ephesians 1. He says, verse 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. My friends, Jesus Christ lavishes grace upon those who come to Him in faith. My friends, there was a lady just standing here before me a moment ago, and she told us that what we were saying was making her uncomfortable, and the truth of God oftentimes makes people uncomfortable, makes sinners uncomfortable. And it is true. But my friends, Christ brings comfort to those who mourn. What did Jesus say? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? That is, it means to recognize our spiritual poverty. To recognize that we, in and of ourselves, are poor and miserable and wretched and sinners in the hands of an angry God. And that we need His grace if we are ever to be saved. If we are ever to be set free from the bondage 
to sin and the bondage to the truth that we deserve hell. See, only Jesus Christ can cleanse, only Jesus Christ's blood can cleanse a defiled, filthy conscience. Many of you have consciences which have been defiled by sin. And it screams out to you, as it were, concerning your life of iniquity. But that can only be soothed if you look to Jesus Christ knowing that He has paid for those very sins upon the cross. That you, you accept that in faith. I love what Jesus said in John 3. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Sir, the Bible says God will not be mocked. It says whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Sir, it's true. That's what the Bible says. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says that those who commit the sin of homosexuality aren't going to enter God's kingdom. It's true, my friend. But Jesus Christ restores us to a right standing before God. Because see, what happened? God made man, male and female in the, in the garden. Adam and Eve. But what happened? The, 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 the serpent came in and tempted the woman. And then she gave the forbidden fruit to her husband Adam. And Adam sinned against God. And he was the federal head of the human race. He represented all humankind. And in his falling, all of us fell in him. All of us fell in Adam. But my friends, Jesus Christ, the last Adam, represents as federal head His people, His church. Jesus Christ, through His vicarious life, death, burial, and resurrection, has represented His people, His bride. And Jesus Christ died. Sir, you're going to be born again by God's grace. Oh, really? Yeah, you got to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we come out here to tell you this, in the, in the rain like this. Sir, have you been born again? Have you been born again by God's grace? It's like the guy going to reach for the bad thing. Oh. Reach God bless you. Thank you. God bless you, brother. God bless you, brothers. Thank you. I'd say you stay dry, but that's just futile. That's right. The five solas. Sola gratia. That's right. It's all by grace. Sola fide. Faith alone. In Christ alone. To God's glory alone. Yeah, yeah. Good job. My friends, as I said earlier, sin kills. It destroys the soul. But Jesus saves. But going back to what I was saying, Christ, the federal head of the human uh, of His people, Christ representing His church through His work, has procured eternal redemption. And all who come unto Him in saving faith by the power of His Spirit will be saved. Hey, sir, I'd love to speak with you, but I don't want you to walk away, though. Don't say something, just walk away. I'd love to speak with you. All right, friend, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to scare you off. The wicked flee when no one is pursuing. Nobody came after you, sir. Now listen, friends. Christ being this representative for His people, He is our federal head. If you are in Him, if you are in His church, a part of His people. See, Paul, what did he tell the, the men at Ephesus? Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her. It's interesting. People talk about God's love. God is love, etc. And that's true. We know that 1 John 4, 8 tells us God is love. And we see that manifested in creation as well. Scripture uh, thoroughly testifies reality that God is love. But people detest the manifestation of God's love. My, another brother mentioned this earlier. People hate the symbol of God's love. What's the symbol of God's love? The cross of Jesus Christ. That's the symbol of God's love. That God does not let sin go unpunished, but that He was so merciful He provided a lamb. The lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Who rules and reigns. And Jesus is not this effeminate social justice warrior that you, you hear a lot of religious people talk about. You know, Jesus, He'd never offended anybody. He, de he, dare, he would never no, dare say anything that would make anybody upset. But my friends, Jesus was killed. He was betrayed into the hands of the Romans because He spoke such truth. He surely was offensive, my friends. And He is to be feared. The Lord Jesus Christ, though gracious, is to be feared because He has holy wrath. Kiss the Son, lest His wrath be soon kindled. My friends, Christ has holy wrath against His enemies. And He's coming to destroy His enemies one day.
Listen to the way John describes Jesus. Deut Deuteronomy 28. If you fully obey the Lord your God, and all these blessings will be bestowed upon you. You'll be blessed. Sir, have you fully obeyed God? Every Don't walk away. I want to talk to you, please. I already have, brother. I'm a minister, dude. Sir, have you kept God's law as you Absolutely. ought to? Absolutely. Amen. Do you, so how are you going to go to heaven? How are you going to make it to heaven? Jesus, he's our ticket. My God, it's Wait, what? Excuse me. Excuse a little confused me. there, sir. But listen to the way John describes meeting the Lord Christ in, in the book of Revelation. Revelation 1, verse 12. He says, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and I, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands like one like a son of man, clothed with a ro long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His voice was like the roar of many waters. Or excuse me, his feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and last and the living one. I died. And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. My friends, Christ is the omnipotent one, all-powerful. And my friends, we ought not fear things in this life. We ought not fear the things that are contained in this world. Rather, we ought to fear the one who controls this world. We ought to fear he who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Right now, the rain is falling hard upon each and every one of us. And I'm getting soaked. Now, my friends, I want to say this. In hell, there is not a drop of water to relieve the suffering. There's tons of water in hell. No, absolutely not. In fact, in fact, Jesus said this no. in Luke 16, that the rich man in hell looks up and says to Abraham, just give me a drop of water. Just let a drop of water touch my tongue. He desired so badly that the sufferings of hell be relieved. Friends, I don't, sir, I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, who is himself the King of glory. What, what do you think about gay people? What do I think about gay people? Are they bad or... Well, we're all bad. Every single one of us are, are vile, wretched people. Do you think so they can homosexuality is just another sin, just like lying, thievery, blasphemy. So they need to be saved just like you and I do. Absolutely. I'm saying on the street, I'm preaching. Jewish and homosexual. Hey, sir, I want you to believe upon Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua is HaMashiach. He is the Messiah. Read the Tanakh, study the Nabim. You will find that the writings of Dawid are correct, that he was going to have a son to sit upon his throne. Oh man, please don't be don't have such hate filled in your heart. I thought we live in the day of tolerance and love. Tolerance for everything except Christianity. Yeah, so I was gonna leave so, we pack up. Unfortunately. Never friends. It's interesting. Tolerance. We, we talk about tolerance and tolerance and tolerance. But if we hear something that offends us, we certainly won't tolerate that. But my friends, we need to be, let the truth wound us every once in a while. The truth is good. Sir, you got to be born again. I care. I care for you. I drove eight hours to get here and sit out in the rain. I care for you. I have a family back home. I, 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 I want to be with them. But friends, I do care about you. I want you to believe upon Christ. He is the very radiance. He's the very exact representation of God's nature. And He upholds all things by the word of His power. He is the King of glory. In fact, I love what um, John writes in John 12 after he quotes out of Isaiah. He says, Isaiah saw Jesus' glory and wrote about Him. Isaiah beheld the glory of Jesus Christ there in Isaiah 6 when he says, I saw Yahweh seated on His throne, lofty and exalted with the train of His robe filling the temple. He describes the two cherubim there worshiping God in heaven. And guess who that was? That was Christ. He saw Jesus Christ. He saw the triune God. The God of glory. You and I have sinned. We have offended the Holy One of Israel. And hell awaits the wicked. Hell awaits the wicked, friends. God is a God of anger and wrath. 
God has wrath. In fact, what does Psalm 5 tell us? Verse 4. It says, For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. Sir, I plead with you to come to Christ and to live. Jesus says that He came to give life and life abundantly. Not talking about the Joel Osteen abundant life. Are you Pastafarian? No, I'm not Pastafarian. Sir, like I, I believe in Jesus Christ. Monster? The yeah, fire sir, it doesn't exist. It's a fairy tale for an adult. It's just like atheism, just like all the world views. What about Jesus Christ? Jesus is the true God. That's why you have to believe upon Him. you got to be born again. Oh, sir, that's a fairy tale for adults. How old are you? you got to act your age, my friend. Come on, we got to act like men. The Bible says act like men. Can I get a Bible, please? What's that, sir? Can I get a Bible? Do uh, you have a Bible for him? I, I do not have one on me, unfortunately, sir. I'm sorry, that's kind of fake. I'll say it. Were you trying to... Don't, don't steal from us. We don't want you to steal. The Bible says do not steal. At least he admitted that it's fake. It's pseudo. Friend, you need to be saved from your from your hypocrisy, from your lying, from your thievery. But he says in verse, uh, excuse me, Psalm 5, Most will shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors them, the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. That's the, that's the character of God. My friend, you need to call upon the name of Jesus Christ and He'll forgive you. <laughs> Sir, why do you have such hatred in your heart? You need to have the love of God shed abroad in your heart through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity is at work. My friends, in the preaching of the Gospel, when it goes forth, we trust that the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is at work. That He is glorifying Christ. That He is applying the Word to hearts, perhaps even to harden them. The same sun that melts wax hardens clay. You know, my friends, many of you are just further hardened, further fattened up for hell at the preaching of the gospel, which grieves us. It breaks my heart. Sir, I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want the preaching of the gospel to fall on deaf ears. I really don't. Yo, what's that book called? This is called the Bible, the Word of God. Right. Right. I am God. You are not. How do you not? know? That's blasphemy, my friend. Psalm 11, verse 4. The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, His eyelids test the children of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but His soul hates the wicked. And the one who loves violence. Well, dear friends, Jesus Christ saves from such things, saves from such evil deeds. A love of violence, a love of the world, a love of sin. Christ saves from that, dear friend. I like that. What's the situation? You've sinned against the Holy God. Not fun. I can't wait. Psalm 14, 1. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They, they have all turned aside together. They have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. My friends, this is the this is the the the, the hopeless state of the wicked. But Christ entered into time. In fact, by his coming into the world, Jesus split time in half. We now do before Christ in Anno Domini, year of our Lord. He split time in half through his coming into the world, my friends. That's how significant the person of Jesus Christ is. Truly God, truly man. Oh my friends, don't have such hatred in your heart. Who's selling ponchos?
Jesus entered into time to redeem those who live inside the realm of time in due time by His grace. And it's all for His glory. We come out here to give glory to Jesus Christ. It's not only for your benefit, but we know God is pleased. God is glorified. God is honored. God is exalted. God is praised. God is adored through the preaching of the Gospel. Even when we are reviled and hated by the world, we know that God is glorified. Dear friend, believe upon Christ. Your hatred will be removed out of your heart. Why do you hate your fellow man? I'm not, I'm not saying I hate you. I'm not up here saying I hate you. I'm over saying I love you. I care for you. And God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Uh, Romans 5, uh, verse 8. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than having now been justified by His blood. We shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. Oh, my friends, back in the Old Testament, God set aside a man named Noah and his family unto Himself. And He said, I'm going to judge the world. I'm going to send a worldwide flood. This is about 4,000 years ago that this took place. He said, I'm going to destroy the wicked. I'm going to destroy all animals. I'm going to destroy the earth. And you and your family are going to repopulate the earth because it's become so wicked. It's become so corrupt. And God told him to build a boat, an ark, where he would store the animals, and whosoever wanted to get on the ark could get on and be and be saved from I'm the flood gay. of God's wrath. I am gay. Sir, you need to be saved from your homosexuality. Jesus saves. In fact, I just read a news article the other day about a guy from, uh, you guys remember back in 2016, the Pulse nightclub shooting? I used to live in Orlando, and I, I would drive by the Pulse nightclub all the time, and I would look at the memorial. The, the memorial there and all the flowers and my heart broke for the people whose lives were lost, their families. It's really a sad thing. I, it agrees me that a man would have such hatred in his heart that he would go and kill all those people. But a man who was actually injured in the mass shooting, who was a, a, an open homosexual, came out and said that he had recently, by God's grace, been born again and had believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. See, my friends, Jesus changes lives. And he says, Listen, my life, I've never been so filled with joy as when I'm following after Christ. That's incredible. Praise God for that, my friends. That's, that's what Christ does. And myself and my brothers here can testify that our lives were a mess. We had no joy, no satisfaction in what we were in before. And we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. But we don't submit to Christ like He's a trial. Like a 30-day trial, if you don't like Jesus, you can throw Him back. We submit to Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ because He is the only Lord. And He is the only God and He is true. And because He tells us to. The warrant of faith is Jesus' own Word who said, Come, come, come. But many of you will not come because you're not His sheep. That's all I got. Oh dear friends, we would do well to give God glory for what He has done. We would do well to give God praise. Think about what God has been so merciful in doing. Sending Jesus to suffer the horrible death that He did, the bloody death, the, the humiliating death. You know, we know that the victims of crucifixion were stripped of their clothing. They, they were naked. They were crucified naked. And Christ there hung upon the cross, humiliated, and even prayed for His enemies. Prayed for those who were, who were reviling. Because He knew that through His suffering, He would buy a people. He would purchase a church. He would purchase for Himself a bride. And that was, that was me and all of God's people corporately, as a unit, and each individually by grace. So we ought to praise the Lord. What does Psalm 95 say? Oh, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Verse 6, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God. And we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day 
at Masa in the wilderness when your fathers put me to the test and put me to the proof. It's a waterproof Bible, man. Though they had seen my work for 40 years, I loathed that generation and said, They are a people who go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Therefore, I swore in my wrath, they shall now enter my rest. My friends, that very word of God will come to pass today for every one of you who rejects Christ, who hardens your heart, even though the Spirit of grace says, Come, if you harden your heart to the gospel message, God swore in His wrath, you shall not enter my rest. And that rest is no longer referencing a land, but rather referencing heaven. You will not enter God's eternal rest if you harden your heart to the gospel message. See, we need heart transplants. You know, if someone has a horrible heart condition or perhaps of some sort of cancerous tumor that is close to their heart, they're going to have to have a heart transplant. They need a new heart. My friends, we need a heart transplant because we're born with sinful hearts. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all else and is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? The heart is so evil, my friends. We need heart transplant. And God promises in the new covenant to give His people new hearts that they will know the Lord. No one has to teach them. No one has to tell them. They know the Lord from the least of them to the greatest. And, Sir, come back. I want to speak with you. Don't run away. The wicked flee. The wicked flee. Nobody's chasing. My friends, I hope I'm not that scary looking. I don't know what you're afraid of. We just want to talk. We want to reason together with you concerning the truth. Concerning Christ. Even God Himself says, come to the says to the sinner, come, let us reason together. God bless you, sir. Believe upon the Lord Christ, the King. Oh sir, you need Christ always. The old hymn, I need thee every hour. It's true, sir. You need him every hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine. Can peace afford? I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me, thou, now my Savior, I come to thee. We always need Christ. In fact, we need Christ even just to have a basic worldview. Because any worldview outside of the Christian worldview, there's no worldview at all. We, we can't have a basis for truth, for science, for reasoning, for anything. Sir, I am drinking I'll... alcohol. I cannot understand. Oh, ma'am. Ma'am, you need to turn from your alcoholism. You're being desensitized. You know what alcohol does? It desensitizes the mind. It's intoxicating. It covers, it suppresses the conscience, my friends. You know, ironically, Jesus' first miracle was to change the water to wine. We're not preaching against alcohol exclusively, saying all alcohol is evil. But to be a drunkard, to be an alcoholic is a sin against God because God has made us a certain way and we don't need to try and escape that state of mind. We don't need to try to leave the state of mind in which we are in. In fact, we need to have our minds fixed. We need to have Girl, our minds so calibrated. Wet out. Shut up, Dear friend, I would love to speak with you, young man. Hey, hey come no, here. Got no. shit, bro. Shut the fuck up. Dear friend, it's not, it's not merely mine. Hey, it's true. It's objectively true. My friends, we need our minds to be calibrated to the truth of God. We need our minds to be calibrated to that which is true. Not the other way around. You know, we live in a day and age where relativism rules. You know, our society, you're, you got your truth, I got my truth, and my truth works for me. If it doesn't work for you, just change it. But my friends, truth is objective. Truth is objectively true. If Jesus Christ is Lord, and He is the only God, then no other God can exist. Objective. It is objective, absolutely. No other God can exist. If Christ says He is the true God in eternal life, then no other God can exist. And that is true. That is true. What about the homos and the gays and the Jews? Why do you, what about them? They're sinners just like all of us. Homosexuals are just sinners like all of us. What's that? Do you pinky promise? Pinky promise what? Absolutely. But Jesus Christ came to save us from all sorts of sins. Many different kinds of sins. Including sexual sins such as homosexuality. And lying and thievery and blasphemy. Oh dear friend, Jesus saves you from such wicked things. Hatred for your fellow man. It sounds pretty limited, Henry. but the only way to get Henry. into church right now is with a ticket. The only way to get into heaven and with God is Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. That's limited. 
It is limited. You can't. Uh, my, my friend made a great point. You can't enter Churchill Downs unless you purchase a ticket. It's exclusive. They exclude certain people from entering Churchill Downs. Because if I don't have a ticket, I walk up to the door and I say, Guys, I know you're loving. I know you're gracious. You guys are nice people. They say, Yeah, we are, but we're not letting you in. So it is with God. If you don't have the perfect righteousness of Christ, you cannot enter heaven. And God will say, yes, I am a holy and a just God and a gracious God and a merciful God, a God of love. But I will not let those who do not have the righteousness of my son in. Oh, young lady, you do need to hear it. Hey, ma'am, I don't think you're a Christian the way you're dressed. Because Jesus Christ, when he saves us from sin, we dress differently. Yeah, we do. It's true. Yeah, we do. It's true. I know. Yeah, we do what? We invite you to reason with us concerning the truth. We plead with you. We beg of you to turn to Christ and live. Jesus Christ is a merciful Savior. We ascribe to Him glory this afternoon. And as I close, I just want to give all glory to my Lord, my Redeemer, my Rock, my Salvation, the God, my Shelter, my Shield, and whom I trust. In fact, I read out of the, um, the book of Revelation earlier. I want to read again out of Revelation. Oh, dear friend, Jesus can save you from such hatred in your heart toward your fellow man. In Revelation 4, we find this scene where there is a, a group of many hosts in heaven praising God. It says in uh, verse 8 that they are saying this. It says, Day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Verse 9, And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who is seated on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before Stop the talking. throne, saying, Oh my friend, this is too good. I can't keep my mouth quiet. I can't keep my mouth shut about this. Jesus Christ is Lord and all must know. Shut up, bitch. Take it to the ends of the earth. And verse 11 says, They say, Worthy are you, O Lord, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. And so it has been, and so it shall evermore be, that all things have been created by God and for God's glory. So to God be glory forevermore. Amen.